So today I only had one horse to ride because Barry pulled his shoe off again and Angel's having the day off after the derby, so I've ridden Arrow. Now I'm going to clean all of this mess up. So I think we have those cupboards. Put the rug in there so that stuff I don't use anymore. It's lunging gear. throw away because I know if I throw it away then I'm probably gonna need it again. I don't even know which horse this girth is for. Perhaps they will sell this one. Don't know. If you would like to buy any of the shit you see in this video, DM me. Guards. Safety stirrups? I don't even know if I've ever ridden in safety stirrups. Probably not. It's not very on brand for me. Derby yesterday with Angel. She hadn't been to a competition since August and she was actually really, really good. Last competition she did would have been tambourine and they had the three day um, and she was quite nervous there. Um, she was still a good girl there, but you know, just like typical off the track, like sweating up, a bit anxious. Um, but yesterday she was really chilled out. She was super good. Um, first show jumping round we did, we did clear. We just had a couple of time penalties because the grass was a bit slippy and she doesn't have back shoes on so I just took it kind of steady. And um, then the next show jumping round I went a little bit gung-ho. I was like, don't want time penalties. And then I turned her really sharply to fence number two because it was sort of like fence one roll back fence two and i just forgot which horse i was riding like she's a very talented jumper she's super scopy but because of that sometimes i forget how actually green she is like she hasn't even been jumping for six months and she's not jumped a lot recently especially not show jumping so a little bit too ambitious of a line for her, so she knocked that one. That was my fault. Uh, the rest of the course, she was super, super good though. I was really, really happy with how she jumped. Then we went out to the derby. We had a little bit of a spike at the sunken road where you drop down one stride, pop back up. She got there and she looked down into it and panicked. I think I went a little bit too forward. She had a little spook of that, but then she went straight through and she was fine. And then we got to out the back, you come around like through the trees and then go up. And instead of going up and to the right where my jump was, I just went straight ahead for some reason. I don't know, maybe if it's just some of it used to jump the bigger jumps with the um, arrow, but I jumped the 95 centimeter flower box instead of the 80 centimeter flower box. Entirely my fault on that one. But Asia did well. I stepped up a little bit, so that's fine. We got some really good photos and videos from my mates that came down to help me, so that's good. So I can send that to the people who want to look at Angel as a prospective horse to buy because she is for sale. Um, a David Finch clinic. So I love Finchy. He's the best. He's such a good coach and he's such just a nice human. He's so, I've got a thing about my hands. I've always had like, I think they're terrible hands, but I've broken my fingers so many times and I can't close my left hand properly because I've broken the knuckles too many times. They're just like I used to have this bad habit where because I couldn't close it properly, I'd like do this. I had a coach that used to call it my starfish finger. Sounds horrible. So 
I've always been really paranoid about my hands and I was talking to David and he was, I was like, oh, I know, it's crap, like I've got such ugly hands. He's like, no, you don't, you have beautiful hands, you ride really nicely, your hands are soft. I was like, God, David said I have beautiful hands, no one cry. Like, I know I probably don't have beautiful hands, but like, they have improved a lot because they used to be horrible. And hands is really hard, like, I find it easy to sort of fix things with my, my leg and my seat position. I just struggle with my hands. That's okay. Nobody is perfect. Blowing a gale on Friday, like all the jumps kept falling over. She was a bit spooky about that, but then she settled really quickly, even with like jumps blowing over next to her. She was a really good girl, and there were a lot of like more experienced horses than her that were having issues so pretty happy that she handled that all well the jump that david had us do had like this sort of flag on it and every time the wind would blow the flag would flap like it was a pole with like a tarp sort of thing attached to it that made it like a flag does this make sense i do have a video of it i'll like Yeah, that was the only thing Angel really like spooked at. She was a bit like, what the hell, you want me to jump that thing that's flapping around? But she did it, so very good girl. Um, I need to work on my position a little bit more with her. Because, I don't know, it's not that I don't trust her. I think it's because we're jumping quite small too, but I just like wasn't getting my ass out of the saddle. So I was just like, mm, these are tiny. Just, they were like... 70 centimeter jumps. I was like, yes. But yeah, that's not great. I should practice having like better EQ even with the like little tiny jumps. But that's fine. Uh, I felt like I did do fairly well yesterday. There was a couple of jumps that rode a little bit defensively just because she is quite a green jumper. So I tend to like keep my body back a little bit and sometimes I overdo it, staying too far back just because. I'm used to Barry a lot of the time, and Barry will stop even if you ride perfectly. Sometimes Barry will just still stop on you. So I think that's why I tend to be a little bit more like a safety seat with Angel, even though she doesn't really stop. Like, she'll pretty much just jump whatever's in front of her. She is very brave, she does try very hard. She's a good girl like that. I don't know how to organize the stuff. Like, put rugs in here, but now I'm like, should I put all this boots and like extra stuff I don't really use? Like, these are paddock boots. My horses don't really wear paddock boots, but I keep them for some reason. Actually, no, I am going to get rid of these. I don't need these boots. They are unnecessary and they can go in the cell pile. Oh, I have an extra boob in here. That's handy. It's like a new one too. Cool. So taking a break from tidying because Ari's been outside. Having her equisage. Hey, Bubba. And her second breakfast of the day. Here she is. Hey, sweetheart. Are you finished? Oh, we're all done. She's a very good girl. And oh, do you have extra snacks? Yes. On our way back to the paddock. Ari's breakfast for tomorrow. This is just like a handful of pellets. She only gets fed once a day because she's like a really easy keeper. Because all the other horses get breakfast, I feel bad. So she just gets to have like a little handful of pellets and some hay in the morning. And then she gets a proper feed after exercise. It's curve girl life, Arrow. Not all the feed that the thoroughbreds get. But yeah, so Arrow's headed off for her post exercise roll.
fly mask, another fly mask, bibs, got the satiny ones and the cotton ones, and then we've got the fleece rugs in there. Um, they're just down the bottom because it's summer, so I don't think I'll be using those anytime soon. It doesn't really even get cold enough to use them in winter. I mainly use them if I need to like dry horses off quickly after I've washed them and it's a bit chilly. Okay, so that's one box done. Yes, I use these bandage caddies. So they're meant for bandages, but I put my boots in them. I've got two here. This one's sort of like the good boots, like my jumping boots and arrows cross country boots. So that when I'm going to a comp or a clinic, I can just grab the bag and take it. And I've got all the horses jump boots in there. This one is like my at home one or my like flat work boots. See if I get the lighting. There we go. So at the moment, I've got a pair that's still drying outside. So that's why they're in there. Oh, what's this? A bonnet as well. So these are like my at home jump boots. They're a bit trashed. And these are my very, very old flat work boots. I could probably throw those away, but I'm sure they're still fine. So Barry's cross country boots in there. Those are just some bandage pads and some bandages. Those are my fleece lined flat work boots that I really only use when it's super cold, which is never, because I live in Brisbane where it's always 1000 degrees. They're just a million pairs of like disgusting, mismatched, very stinky gloves. Should probably throw out a couple of pairs, but like they're always good for lunging, I guess. I have like a one dressage and one show jumping pair that I keep at home for my show stuff and then my everyday ones are just trash. The ones I keep in my float are the worst. Like I couldn't even get my hand in them the other day because that's how stiff and sweaty and gross they were. Progress. Okay. So everything's a little bit neater, a little bit more organized. This pile of stuff to take home, wash and some of it can be sold. I clean these bridles because they're disgusting. So, day two of cleaning up, as you can probably tell, because I'm in different clothes. I'm not riding today, I'm only lunging. So, I went home, washed the rest of my rugs, and now I can finish showing you how I've put everything away. I've still got a few more rugs that are off getting repaired, so I'll have to squish those in somewhere when they come back from getting repaired. But probably by the time they're back, then other rugs will be ripped, because that's horses and they destroy everything, that's nice. We'll start at the bottom with the rugs. So this box has all my cotton rugs in it, down the bottom they're the thicker ones, and up the top they're like the thinner flag summer rugs. The rest of this bottom shelf, so I've got a bag that's just got tail bags, spare tail bags in there that go on their cotton rugs. Then this box I showed you before that's just got the fleeces and the bibs in there. Then I've got my float boots shoved above that. Next box of rug and rug related products. These are all like my show ones. So I've got a tail guard and tail bag that they use while they're on the float going to a comp so they don't get their tail dirty. And then this one is all my skinny hoods. This one is like a lacquer bodysuit um, just to keep them clean in the float. Now the skinny hood. This one is like a fleece skinny hood for when we go away somewhere overnight and it's a bit colder like Warwick or Toowoomba or something like that. Um, it doesn't ever really get cold enough for that here. And then I have some more sort of skinny hoods down the bottom that I don't actually use. Um, this can probably get sold as well now I think of it because this box is getting pretty full also. So what I showed you yesterday, Barry's Cross Country boots, jump boots, flat work boots and at home boots, uh, fleece boots, bandages and then in behind there those are like my bandage pads. Then jump pads and I've got jump crop. And the gel pads as well. 
So this is a Acavello gel pad with the fleece. This one's for Arrow's jump saddle. And then Barry's got the, oh God, it's hard to hold this thing one-handed. The Acavello gel pad that's got the back riser in it as well. The correction pad I have in here is this very old Grange Numna, but it's pretty cool. It's got these pockets that unvelcro and you can put different shims in there. So it did come with like some foam shims, but I've actually got different ones in here. These are made out of like an old yoga Pilates mat and I find they're much better. Um, so this is cool because if I've got a new horse or a horse that my tack doesn't fit properly, okay, it's on the floor now, I can just put some different cut up an old Pilates mat, pop some shims in there to try and get the saddle to fit a bit better. Um, I did that for Angel initially until she gained some more muscle. And then down in here, we've just got some medication, hand sanitizer for me. And then I've got disposable gloves in there. This is an ulcer awesome medication. If Barry has to be on butte or anything, I give him ulcer awesome medication. Or if he's traveling, I give that to him to prevent him getting ulcers. Next shelf, I have all my grooming products and stuff. I'll start on this side. So this box behind here, I won't get out because... I'll have to move all this stuff, but that's basically like my show grooming stuff. So like any like chalk makeup, which I don't really ever use. And then all like the coat shine sprays and like the hoof polishes and things like that. Then this shelf is sort of like the daily horse grooming stuff. So a bottle of iodine spray, fly sprays. This is mud shield powder. So if it's really wet, I put that on Arrow's legs so that she doesn't get like, um, what do you call it? Like photosensitivity and stuff, which you sometimes get when it's like wet and humid. This is for Barry. It's hoof hardener because Barry has very typical thoroughbred feet. And behind there I have, it looks disgusting, but it's just copper sulfate mixed with Vaseline. When Angel had CD toe, I used to pack that in there. Then I've got the no sunscreen. That's for Angel and Arrow for when it's really hot and sunny. The little schnozzes don't get burnt. This one's the pseudo cream, so just for like rashes, abrasions. If Barry does get photosensitivity on her legs, I use that and it works really well. Petroleum jelly always comes in handy. Either um, they get bit rubs or if it's really, really bad wet weather before I got the mud shield powder. I used to clean their legs, dry them, slab them with pseudo cream and then put petroleum jelly on top to keep all the moisture off their legs. But this mud shield powder is working really well. So if you live somewhere where it's really, really wet and your horse's legs getting affected, highly recommend. Keratex products are awesome. So coconut oil, I just use for their mane and tails to keep them hydrated. I need a new one. And then my Equiday shampoo and conditioner. I use those especially for their faces when they get like a bit itchy or on their legs they get like fungal sort of things. Really nice um, botanical, really good for the horse's skin and they smell amazing. They also make your horse really shiny and soft. So day to day, I don't wash my horses very often, but when I do wash them at home, I use that. I do use Cowboy Magic before shows because it does make their coat a little bit shinier, but this is much healthier, more natural than Cowboy Magic. And then this is just a coat spray that I use for shows. Um, that's just out because I use some on Angel for the weekend. Normally that would be in there. Then I've got a lantern uh, if I've got to go out to the paddock at night or anything like that. It just helps to have a light I can hang up somewhere if I've got to give medication. That's just got copper sulfate in it. Extension cord. Sorry, the lighting's not good. The light on my phone case isn't working. This is my braiding kit. So everything I use to plait up with is in there. So all my bands, different colored thread, uh, needles, pull-throughs, all that sort of stuff. Then I've got some rock tape. So if I want to tape up Barry, um, Sacro or anything like that, or if I'm doing rehab sort of stuff, I use that. Then I've got clippers just for tidying up. I don't really clip my horse as much, just like legs, bridle path to keep them tidy. And then I've got my hoof boots in there, which I don't really use unless 
They're only a bit barry because they're massive. So they're just in case he pulls a shoe. And then I've got my Muscle Max bars. I also got this random pen. I'm not sure why that's there, but sometimes handy to have a pen. So Muscle Max bars. I give these to my horses when they're at competitions or we go to a clinic and they're working really hard. And then licorice container, which I need to refill because that's getting a bit empty. And then over here is my grooming tote. So I brought this earlier in the year. Uh, I love this tote. And I usually keep ah, a box of, there's like a half-eaten one, uh, Muscle Max bars in there as well. That was from Angel on the weekend. She had a Muscle Max bar after her rounds or just part of a bar after each round to keep her energy up and help her muscles recover. And then I've just got some pawpaw ointment, which I use on their bits, um, on Arrow's bit because she has a loose ring on. And then some Itch Magic lotion that I use if they get a bit itchy. Spray bottle, hairspray. That's just wrapper gel, detangler, hoof picks. And then the rest of it's not that entertaining. Hands-on gloves. These are awesome um, for grooming. Love them. Saves so much time. And then I've got my aloe vera spray as well. That's empty. I need to get another one. But that's really good as well for the itchy horses. I've been using that more than the itch magic stuff. Um, just again, it works really well. It smells really nice. And I find it easier to have something I can spray on rather than like a cream I have to rub on. I need to get a new one. Behind the grooming coat is my bathing stuff. So all the other shampoos I don't use as often. So that's the Malsab medicated one, uh, the Cowboy Magic. Um, I also have like some purple shampoo in there for Aaron Angel's socks. And oh, some head and shoulders if they have dandruff. But I don't really use that too much. Since I've been using the Equidae products, my horses don't really get like dandruff or dry itchy skin, which is awesome. And then top shelf, we've got sunscreen because I'm out here a lot. It's really important to reapply. This isn't actually 30. This is just a small bottle I refilled with 50 plus. So always go for the highest dose sunscreen that you can. And then some electrical tape. I keep the rest of the tape in the boot bags with the cross country boots so that I can tape the boots up for cross country. Uh, but I just have one out here just for you know, comes in handy. And then this one is different spurs. I don't really use any of these spurs at the moment. I've got like the one set of spurs I use in a different bag with my gloves, but they're on my spare ones and spare straps. These are gloves. So these are like my spare older gloves, not the ones that I use every day. And then this bag, I've just got my everyday spurs, so just little rollable ones. I only really use these on Arrow for dressage and Barry jumping, because as I said, Barry will stop on you sometimes, so sometimes you need a bit of a backup in case he tries to pull sneaky moves. And then, yeah, these gloves are disgusting too, but I really like them. They're just really nice thin gloves. I've got a nicer pair of these that I use for comps, but these are just my at-home ones. And then we've got whip, hat. Uh, this is the helmet I use every day at the moment. And I've got another spare helmet in there. I've got my safety vest if I'm going to go ride on the road. That's from Equestrian New Zealand. Thank you very much. They sent me that. And then these are girth covers, bonnets, and this blue folder over here. These are all my dressage tests. So all the EA dressage tests are in there and I've probably got some like old sheets from comps in there as well. I don't really use those too often because they're just all on my phone anyway, but always comes in handy to have one like a book of tests. I also have like a really old stud kit back in there that I won't get out. It's not very interesting. I only really use studs at home. So, And then these all my dressage pads. So yeah bit of a variety and that's it for this Second side. set of cupboards nothing much has really changed I keep my equisage in there what I'd like to do eventually is get some hooks or like a saddle rack drilled in the back of there if that's possible so I can use that top space to like hang stuff up like spare lunging line uh, there are the winter rugs down the bottom so heavy duna rugs rain sheets 
that's just a spare fly mesh rug. I don't really use that often. I prefer to use cotton over meshes. Do you have another mesh at home that's being washed? And then my tough rock for after cross country, after I'd be jumping a lot. These are just some cleaning sprays. So if I'm gonna clean the float or clean the shelves out in here. Uh, this one is actually rubbing alcohol mixed with water. So if I'm breaking like a new pair of boots, I spray that in my boots before I ride and it helps them stretch. These are actually all spare jump cups for my jumps up the back. Can't really see in there, plus it's really heavy, so I'm not gonna get them out. That is Barry's uh, Lick It Treat boredom buster thing that goes in his stable where I took it down just because it was getting annoying. These are all spared guts, so I need to get like another like box or something, do a Kmart trip and find something to put all this extra stuff in. So I've got uh, some spare lunge lines, a spare gullet, arrow saddle. Yeah, just extra reins and things like that. Some extra little bits of lunging things. So I'll just get another box like I have in there for all that miscellaneous stuff. And yeah, then just some towels, spare towels. So the last stuff I have in the tack room is just these hooks. So there's a lot of stuff on this one hook. So my lunge roller, my lunge lines, the nice halters that they wear to competitions. Got some like random ribbons in there. I think they're the first ribbons Angel got, so that's why I kept those. And then my bridles and spare bits all on these hooks over here and breastplate and things like so that. So that is pretty much it. I find it way easier to have everything set up like this so I can just go to the section of stuff I need. Uh, like if I'm going to go to a show, I can just grab my plaiting stuff out, chuck it in my groom bag, grab the shampoo and conditioner for the wash kit. Um, if I'm going to a clinic and we're jumping, I can just grab the jump boots out, throw them in the float. Yeah, I find it works. Um, this isn't going to be my setup permanently. Once my own place is built, I'll probably have like a proper tack room. But for now, this is working really well. These shelves have been great because they keep rodents and stuff like that out of my gear. So next I'm going to just be cleaning the rest of the gear that I need to get rid of and sell. I've still got some bridles and stuff at home I need to clean. So I might do another video where I clean my bridles and go through bits and stuff like that and how I clean my gear and keep it nice. If you guys want to see that, let me know. But thanks for watching. If you guys want me to do more of these videos, I will. Trying to get writing video is a bit hard because I'm by myself most of the time unless I'm at a comp or a clinic and I've convinced someone to come with me. But yeah, if you guys want more like horse ownership, storage, organization, barn vlogs or horse healthcare stuff, I'm happy to do that. Um, we can also maybe do some like Pilates videos. I don't know. I'm not very good at making these yet. I'll probably get better. I might not get better. We'll see.